Tonight, breaking news as we come on the air. Millions on the West Coast bracing for life-threatening and damaging flooding. And another round of U.S.-led airstrikes targeting Iranian-backed militants in Yemen. But first, that dangerous storm system taking aim at California. Expected to stall over the state for up to 24 hours. As much as 12 inches of rain expected in some places before it's all over on Tuesday. 40 million residents under alert for dangerous flooding. Our weather team timing it all out. And breaking overseas, the latest U.S. strikes in Yemen in retaliation for repeated attacks on merchant shipping in the Red Sea. Tonight's military action against the Houthis hitting 36 targets across 13 locations in Yemen. This coming just one day after the mission to strike other Iranian-backed militants in Iraq and Syria. American warplanes delivering a blow to the armed groups the U.S. blames for killing three Americans and wounding more than 40 others on that remote base in Jordan. That response expected to be a multi-day campaign amid increasing fears of a wider escalation across the region. Marcus Moore in Jordan with late reporting. The long-awaited and much-anticipated bipartisan border bill, months in the making. What we're learning about what's in the measure. Will Republicans who fought for the agreement wind up supporting it? The crucial first-in-the-nation test for President Biden. People heading to the polls for the South Carolina primary. Democrats hoping to energize black voters. The urgent investigation in Indianapolis. Two women found dead in two separate incidents within days of each other. Police saying they were killed in a similar manner. The long road to recovery in East Palestine. One year after the fiery, toxic train derailment. Our team on the ground with residents. What they're now saying about their health. The remarkable rescue in frigid waters and the unlikely rescuers. And America Strong tonight, the teachers, their million dollar win and their priceless message. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Whit Johnson. We have a couple of breaking stories as we come on the air. Another round of U.S. strikes against Iranian-backed militants in the Middle East, this time in Yemen, with the help of British forces and other allies. But we begin tonight with the life-threatening storm and dangerous flooding in the West. 40 million Americans under flood watches and millions facing dangerous winds. This satellite imagery here showing a time lapse of the atmospheric river in the eastern Pacific Ocean. Ocean. Storm preps underway in Santa Barbara County, some under evacuation orders in that area. Officials going door to door to notify residents. Ventura County also under evacuation orders and warnings. Let's get right to ABC meteorologist Samara Theodora leading us off tonight and Samara time this out for us. Well, Whit, today was the day for preparations. Tomorrow, all the impacts will be felt. Alerts are lighting up the board from flood watches and high surf advisories to winter storm warnings. Now, let's talk timing. From northern and central California, the worst of the rain begins tonight and sticks around through midday tomorrow. Then heavy rain makes its way into Los Angeles and San Diego tomorrow evening into the Monday morning commute. Concentrated rain could prompt mudslides and rock slides in the mountains, copious amounts of snow, anywhere from two to four feet. There will be wind gusts as high as 80 miles per hour there, leading to major power outages. Finally, impact. Santa Barbara has issued evacuations with high likelihood of life-threatening flash flooding. Up to a foot of rain in urban areas like Los Angeles is rare. This will lead to freeway flooding. Ultimately, this is an incredibly powerful and widespread storm moving in. Whit? We still have a ways to go with this one. All right, Samara, thank you. We turn now to the latest U.S. strikes against Iranian-backed militants in Yemen. The U.S. and its allies conducting airstrikes against 36 Houthi targets across 13 locations in response to attacks against international commercial shipping in the Red Sea. This just one day after retaliatory strikes against dozens of sites in Syria and Iraq following the deaths of three U.S. service members in Jordan. Here you can see before and after satellite images of one of those strikes in Syria by American forces and the devastation on full display in Iraq, burnt out cars and destroyed buildings. This long range supersonic B-1 bomber taking off overnight to take part in those airstrikes. But so far, the Houthi rebels have made it clear they have no intention of scaling back their assaults in the Red Sea. ABC's Marcus Moore in Jordan tonight. 
tonight, just hours ago, officials confirming that U.S. and British forces, supported by six other countries, have unleashed a new large-scale attack on Houthi targets in Yemen. American F-18 fighter jets and warships with the Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group firing guided Tomahawk missiles, striking 13 different locations. U.S. Central Command forces also saying earlier they struck six Houthi anti-ship cruise missiles prepared to launch and destroyed 12 Houthi drones on Friday, either mid-flight or ready to be launched from Yemen. Those drones a serious threat to international trade transiting through the Gulf of Aden. Parts of Iraq and Syria today also waking up to the sound of American missiles. After several days of warning, the U.S. retaliating against Iran-backed proxies blaming them for carrying out the drone strike that killed three service members at an army outpost in Jordan a week ago. In the Iraqi town of al Qaim, 200 miles from Baghdad, burned out cars and buildings reduced to rubble. The destruction left by some of the 125 guided munitions used in the strike. This resident claiming there was an explosion of equipment and rockets stored by an Iraqi paramilitary group made up predominantly of Shiite Muslims who want the United States out of the region. That secondary explosion possibly seen here in videos circulating online. But the White House signaling last night that more strikes are coming. We will not hesitate to defend our people and hold responsible all those who harm Americans. These responses began tonight, but they're not going to end tonight. In all, three sites in Iraq and four in Syria were targeted. This long-range supersonic B-1 bomber taking off overnight to participate in an airstrike. These satellite images taken before and after showing the scope of the bombardment over one Syrian town. A Syrian human rights group saying 29 members of Iranian-backed militias were killed, while Iraqi officials say at least 16 people were killed there, including civilians, arguing the strike violates Iraq's sovereignty. Though President Biden has repeatedly said he does not seek direct conflict with Iran, Iran's foreign ministry saying overnight the American barrage, quote, is a threat to regional and international peace and security. Still, Iran not yet vowing to retaliate. Marcus Moore joining us now from Jordan. And Marcus, other groups aligned with Iran in the Middle East also responding tonight. Uh, with, that's right. Hezbollah and Hamas are among those groups condemning the retaliation. And it, I think it signals just how much the Israel-Hamas war is playing a direct role in everything we've seen happen in the region. And there's more news coming from U Yemen tonight. U.S. officials saying they targeted deeply buried weapons storage facilities and air defense systems there in Yemen. And with, there may be more yet to come. All eyes on the Middle East. Marcus, thank you so much. And tune in to this week tomorrow morning. George Stephanopoulos speaks with White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan on the latest strikes in the region. Now to the crisis at the border and a rare bipartisan solution from the U.S. Senate. Lawmakers say text of the final bill is probably around 200 pages long and will be released this weekend. Let's bring in ABC's Ike Ajachi on Capitol Hill. So, Ike, what new details are we learning about this possible deal? Well, with the bill is expected to include adjusting the rules for who qualifies for asylum, even allowing migrants to work while their asylum cases are adjudicated. President Biden would also have the ability to shut down the southern border if the number of migrant crossings reaches a certain undecided threshold. Now, the bill also expected to include funding for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan, part of the president's 100 plus billion dollar funding request that he made to Congress back in October. Now, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says the package could reach the Senate floor as soon as Monday, but can they get the 60 votes they need? There may be less support among Republicans. Former President Donald Trump has publicly slammed the deal, telling lawmakers to oppose it. And with this is all happening, as the House is expected to vote as early as Tuesday on whether or not to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Wit. A busy week on Capitol Hill. Ike, thank you. Next tonight, South Carolina taking center stage for Democrats in the race for the White House. It's the first official contest of the Democrats' presidential primary season and the first time that state is going first, leaping ahead of Iowa and New Hampshire. This could also be a big test for President Biden and his support among black voters who are critical in getting him elected. Here's ABC's Mary Alice Parks in South Carolina with the results just coming in. It had been first in the South, but now first in the nation. Tonight, Democrats kicking off their primary in South Carolina. President Biden has not faced a major primary challenger this cycle. And as expected, ABC News projecting he will win the primary here. The president today upbeat as he stopped by and officially opened his re-election campaign headquarters in Wilmington, Delaware. 
I'm feeling good about where we are. I really am. Black Democrats in the Palmetto State credited with turning around his 2020 campaign. I wouldn't be here without the Democratic voters of South Carolina, and that's a fact. President Biden visiting the state twice in January, the vice president three times since the beginning of the year. Are you ready to make your voices heard? South Carolina, a major test for Democrats who have leaned in here and worked to energize black voters who make up around 60 percent of Democratic primary voters in the state, far above the national average. This is a connector for the black community in particular. And you have seen in, in history what happens in South Carolina has a ripple effect. But Brian Gray, who owns Railroad Barbecue in Columbia and voted for Biden in the last election, says he's still undecided about who he'll vote for in the general election. I do want to see um, some of those things done. Student loan, um, the, you know, the student loan plan, I want to see that done. I want to see health care overhauled. These college Democrats telling me if it's a Biden-Trump rematch, they're confident Democrats will come out in force. Are people going to be excited enough to vote for him? It's going to come down to two candidates, and they're going to choose Joe Biden. Now, with those young college Democrats insisted to me, too, that they are proud of Biden's accomplishments on things like climate change and gun safety. Now, Republicans will have their primary here in just a few weeks. But next up is Nevada with its primary in just three days. With Mary Alice Parks for us in South Carolina. Thank you. Now to a disturbing murder mystery in Indianapolis. Police are investigating the killings of two women, trying to determine if their deaths are connected. They were killed in a similar manner, about 150 yards away from each other, with ties to the same community. Police now asking neighbors to check their security cameras for anything suspicious. Here's ABC's Morgan Norwood. Tonight, police in Indianapolis are asking the community to be aware of their surroundings after they say two women were killed in the same way, in the same area, and just days apart. Authorities say Shannon Lasser and Marion Weiss were both found 450 feet from each other. Lasser found stabbed last Saturday morning. Weiss found on Thursday. We need uh, the community's assistance to understand exactly maybe what information, what these women were doing before they were killed. Both are Caucasian women in their 50s. Police haven't revealed how they were killed, but say they were both murdered in the same manner and at ties to the same part of Indianapolis. Police investigating whether their deaths are connected. The last confused and hurt. Shannon Lasser's son and daughter crushed, describing their mother as loving and God-fearing. Angry. Does he deserve that? Lasser's daughter saying her mom went to the gas station across the street and never came home. Why take somebody from people? You took my mother that I'm never going to get back again. And with, as you can imagine, the community there on alert, police are ramping up patrols and also urging residents in that area to check out their security camera footage for anything out of the ordinary. With Morgan Norwood reporting tonight. Thank you. Next tonight, East Palestine, Ohio, one year after that toxic train derailment. New video released this week of that hazardous plume that forced residents to flee their homes. Authorities say the soil and tap water are safe, but many residents remain afraid of getting sick. ABC's Alex Perche back in East Palestine again tonight. Tonight, one year after that toxic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, newly released body camera video shows state troopers going door to door, ordering people to evacuate. That's not a bad. It's they're worried it's going to explode. The scrutiny of that emergency response growing. Ohio Senator J.D. Vance visiting the town Friday. We'll see what the NTSB report says. I my strong suspicion is there were a lot of mistakes. Much of the community is still shrouded in a cloud of uncertainty. The EPA and rail operator Norfolk Southern insist it's safe. But many locals remain skeptical, and many have moved elsewhere. I'd like to hear one way or the other, for sure, for real. The doctor, when asked what should they do, his response was move away or consult an attorney. Lori and Wayne O'Connell live about three miles from the derailment, across the border in Pennsylvania. Months after the accident, the couple and their daughter say they all tested positive for vinyl chloride, a carcinogen aboard that train. And weeks later, Wayne was diagnosed with breast cancer. Do you think your breast cancer is linked to that derailment? I can't say for sure, but it seems awful coincidental. Norfolk Southern insists there are no current health threats. You feel confident that this area is safe? 
I, I, I very much feel confident this area is safe. Norfolk Southern and the EPA have taken 45,000 samples since the accident. They say the results have been below levels requiring action. With the cleanup ongoing, authorities telling ABC News the community is on pace to return back to normal by late summer. But Joy Masher fears her floral shop may close by then. She only has three Valentine's Day orders so far. I want to be positive, but it's hard when we're struggling as much as we are. With President Biden slated to make a first, his first visit to East Palestine later this month, and many people here are urging him to declare a federal disaster to ensure more financial aid. Wait. And that community has been through so much over the last year. Alex, thank you. News tonight about Attorney General Merrick Garland, the 71 year old briefly turning over his duties to Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco while undergoing back surgery earlier today. A Department of Justice spokesperson th saying that the procedure went well and Garland has resumed his duties while recovering at home. There is still much more ahead on World News Tonight this Saturday. The early morning stabbing in Paris. Three people hurt what officials are saying about the suspect and the unusual water rescue in Norway. Stay with us. Next tonight, an investigation underway in Paris after a stabbing attack at one of the city's train terminals. The city already on high alert ahead of this summer's Olympics. Three people were hurt, a suspect arrested with the help of a witness nearby. Authorities think the man may have been suffering a mental health episode. They do not believe the incident was terrorist related. An unusual rescue in Oslo, Norway, a sauna boat saving two motorists who had accidentally driven into a fjord. The two climbing onto the roof of their car as it begins to sink. The skipper of the sauna boat racing to pull up next to the vehicle. People on board helping with the rescue in the frigid waters. The motorists did get to warm up in the sauna, though. When we come back, the lucky pup saved from a container at a Houston port and the race to contain deadly fires in Chile. To the index now in the deadly wildfires ravaging Chile, at least 46 people have been killed, more than 1,000 homes destroyed. Officials say nearly 100 fires are burning in the central and southern parts of the country. More than 450 firefighters are battling those flames. The lucky pup, now known as Connie the Container Dog, is now safe and looking for a new home. The tired and hungry dog was discovered trapped in a shipping container in the port of Houston by a team of marine inspectors who heard her barking and scratching. When the team opened the door of the container, Connie stuck her head out. They immediately gave her water, and she's now up for adoption. When we come back, the teachers who dreamed big and won. Finally tonight, America Strong, the teachers, their big win and their hopes for the future. A big win for a group of teachers in Florence, Kentucky. I won! <laughs> 30 current and former teachers at R.A. Jones Middle School claiming their checks from the Kentucky Lottery one by one. <laughs> After holding the winning numbers to a $1 million Powerball prize, the group calling themselves the Jones 30. For over three years, pulling their money to play the lottery every week, playing the exact same numbers, 7, 38, 65, 66, and 68, originally picked out of a bag. Last week, the group's ticket matching the five main winning numbers, hiding that winning $2 lottery ticket in a birthday card inside a math workbook. I put it in the math workbook on page 200. The million dollar prize equaling about $24,000 each after taxes. As golly gee whiz, you know for sure we're going to spend some of that money on our students. Every teacher you know, puts so much of what they make, what little they make back into the kids. For us, it's changing our lives 100% because it is bringing attention to educators. <laughs> it's bringing attention to our school. A lesson in perseverance and the importance of community. We didn't give up. We kept trying. It's a win for teachers. Like, you know, stick together and great things can happen. Yes, they do. And we love our teachers here at World News. Congratulations. I'm Whit Johnson in New York. Have a great night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.